Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This, is, this should be the conclusion of Jacob's trouble. And the title of this is, who is Jacob Israel? Now, those of you that have been listening to me for a while, a lot of this material is going to be old stuff. But you got to realize something. I have to do my studies as if somebody's brand new and has never heard any of my previous work before. Now, I uh, did a... I'm trying to raise awareness, and I put a petition on the White House uh, petitions website asking for to make July White History Month. You know, Caucasians. Well, let's face it. You know, you've got, uh, let's see, you've got, uh, you've got a Black History Month. Okay, that's in February. Women's History Month is in March. Asian History Month and shares a month with Jewish History Month in April. And then you got Gay Pride in June, Hispanic Latino in September, and then Native American in November. And I ask, are whites who invented the automobile, the airplane, jets, trains, ocean liners, telephone, radio, television, computers, AC electricity, air conditioning, refrigerators, are, are, are not they, those that have invented all these numerous inventions, making up our modern civilization not worthy of a month? Why is this racist? Why would a right hist white history month be racist? And uh, if you look below in the comments or in the description, there is going to be a link to the White House petition. You can sign it. If I can get um, over, I think it's 160 signatures, it'll be listed on the White House website. And if we get over 20,000, um, you know, maybe uh, the president will sign a proclamation making White History Month. Now, I'm not doing this out of pride. I know exactly what the Bible says about pride. You know, pride goeth before the fall and destruction, and I'm paraphrasing, but I know exactly what pride is. And I'm not doing this for pride. This is just to call awareness so that I want to wake up the Christians going, oh, wait a minute, we've, we've got Indian and Hispanics and gays, Jewish, Asian, women, black. Why is a white history month, why is that racist? You know, that's why I'm doing this. You know, I want to show them what's the, the liberal media. They will absolutely have a fit. Matter of fact, I might even lose my job over this. And if there's any fallout at all, I'm going to retire immediately. So, uh, you know, but let's take a look. Who is Israel from the Bible alone? Let's take a look. Does the Bible identify who Israel is? Now, if you listen to the black Hebrews, they will tell you oh, it's the Negroes from Africa. Yep, they're definitely, they're definitely Israel according to them because there's a verse in the Bible that says, I am black and we, we was in slavery. That's what they'll tell you. Then you got uh, the Mormons that say the American Indians, that they're Israel. And you've got a group in Japan that says, well, they're Israel, the chosen people. And then you got the John Hagees and TBN people and the 700 prophets of Baal uh, that say, well, you know, the, the people that call themselves Jews over in the Middle East, uh, Tel Aviv, and Jerusalem, the, they're Israel. And uh, then you got the uh, La Raza group and Hispanics, and they some of them say that they're Israel. 
But if the Caucasians, the whites, say that they're Israel, oh, that's an identity, horrible hate group, white supremacists, white supremacists, they're evil, they're racist. So why is that? You know, I mean, let's face it, the white culture and race um, has invented the modern civilization today. I mean, if it wasn't for Nikolai Tesla, whose both his grandparents were Christian clergy, by the way, and he was a Christian. Of course, they'll lie and say he wasn't. But uh, if it wasn't for him it, learning how to turn magnetism into electricity by way of generators, I mean, we wouldn't have modern electricity unless you know somebody else invented it, but he did. And he tried to give everybody free power, but the powers that be, the rich bankers, said, free power? We can't have that. We can make money on this. They shut him down. And, you know, the rest is history. So, you know, Nikolai Tesla, I'm looking forward to meeting him in the kingdom. And Thomas Edison, I'm going to wave uh, bye-bye to him when he gets thrown into the lake of fire, if you know, I don't make that decision who goes where, but uh, based upon Edison's life and uh, what he loved, money, um, I would venture that would be a good guess as to where he's going to end up. All right, so let's take a look at the claims that uh, who is Israel? What does the Bible say? Because let's face it, people, whoever Israel is, is going to be the object of Satan's wrath in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Now, if you, you know, I've done, what, four previous studies where I've gone through all this stuff. I mean, it's like a couple of hours of Bible studies where I document Jacob's name was changed by the Lord himself to Israel. And it's, you know, whoever Jacob is, they're going to be the recipients of the wrath of Satan, the dragon, the devil, in the time of what they call the Great Tribulation. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, the claims of the black Hebrews so-called, and uh, we'll take a look at everywhere where the Bible says the word black. All right, let's take a look. Now, in the book of Leviticus, 13th chapter, 31st and 37th verse, it talks about black hair, okay? And, uh, well, let's take a look. In Job chapter 30 and verse 30, it says, my skin, is, my skin is black upon me and my bones are burnt with heat. Huh, okay, well, that, yeah, that's, that's it, right? So let's, uh, let's take a look. All right, uh, let's see. What verse are we going to start here with? Let's read Job 30 and verse 25. Now remember, Job is being persecuted. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled and rested not. The days of affliction prevented me. I went mourning, not not morning and afternoon, but mourning as in a death in the family. You mourn. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons. And if you don't know what dragons are in the Bible, it says that old dragon 
that old serpent called the dragon, the devil, and Satan. That's in the book of Revelation. Okay. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burnt with heat. Okay. My harp also is turned to mourning and my organ in the voice of them that wept. Okay. So his skin's black. That proves it, right? Plus they say, well, you know, blacks, we were in slavery. Well, I hate to tell you people, but every race has been in slavery at one time or another. Matter of fact, um, you ever heard of being shanghai There was a place, a city in China called Shanghai, and they used to kidnap people and knock them over the head, knock them out, and then they'd wake up out in the middle of the ocean on a ship and say, oh, by the way, you're our new ship hand. And if you don't want to work on our ship, well, we'll just throw you overboard and you can swim home. Which is kind of hard to do when you're, you know, 50 miles from the nearest land, right? So, let's take a look at uh, the Song of Solomon. Uh, take a look at Solomon, number chapter 1. And it says, I am black. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. And there are people who tell you Solomon was a sodomite because he's writing this. But, you know, he's speaking in the spiritual sense of God with Israel as a bride with her beloved. A lot of symbolic language here. Verse 3. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. And that's what God wants of his church. A virgin bride. Good luck with that today. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. I am black. Ooh, right there, that proves. Black Hebrews, right? I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. Oh, is that why the, they're black? Because of the sun. Or were they born that way before they even ever saw set their eyes on the sun? Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where, do, uh, where doubt thou feedeth, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, the fairest among women? Ooh, okay. Now, are they talking about when they say fair, are they talking about people playing a board game like Monopoly, where they're not cheating? Or are they talking about a description of their countenance or their complexion? Remember Cinderella? Or was it Cinderella? I forget which one it was, but the, the Wicked Witch would go on the, you know, uh, she was had the magic mirror, and she go mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Or was that? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Snow White. Ooh, Snow White. What color is snow? Yeah, white. That's right. I, it wasn't Cinderella. It was you know, uh, Snow White. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Okay. 
Well, let's take a look at something here. What is, uh, what's, what does fair mean? Fair, an adjective, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And let me tell you something. Webster was a language scholar. He spoke over 20 different languages. He knew the root words of multiple languages. The guy knew Bible Hebrew, which is the Old Testament. He knew Bible Greek, which was the New Testament. He knew Latin. He knew German, French, Spanish, and English. He codified the English language standardized the spelling. He spent a large portion of his life putting all the words into a dictionary. And he was a Christian believer. When you look up in Webster's 1828, the original dictionary, the Bible words like sanctification and sacrifice and judgment, I mean, the words line up exactly with what the Bible teaches because the guy could read the Bible in the original languages. He was a scholar in every sense of the word. But now they take the word gay and it means a sodomite. Uh, they've destroyed. All right, the word fair, it's an adjective. It means clear, free of spots, Free from a dark hue. A dark hue. You know what hue, a hue is? It's a shade of color. Free from a dark hue. White. As a fair skin. A fair complexion. Hence. It also means beautiful, handsome, properly having a handsome faith. Um, and he quotes the Bible here. Thou art a fair woman to look upon. Genesis 12:11. Pleasing to the eye, handsome or beautiful in general, thus was be fair in its greatness in the length of his branches. Ezekiel 31.3. Clear, pure, free from F-E-C-U-L-E-N-C-E, -E, I don't know what that means, or extraneous matter as fair water. Clear, not cloudy or overcast, as fair weather or fair squat, sky. Favorable, prosperous, blowing in a direction towards the place of a destination as a fair wind at sea. Remember, they had sailing ships back in them days. So a fair wind was a, a good wind, right? Uh, open, direct, as a way or passage, you are in a fair way up to promotion. Hence, likely to succeed. He stands as fair to succeed as any man. Uh, open to attack or access, unobstructed, as a fair mark. A fair but fair in sight, in fair, in fair sight and fair view. Okay, I mean, it's got a lot of different meanings here, and I could go on and, and on and on and on. But the word fair, the first meaning is clear, free of spots, free of a dark hue, white, as a fair skin or fair complexion, hence. Now, let me tell you something. You can be, if you're a white person and you're out in the sun a lot, you can your skin can turn black. I knew a guy I went to high school with, he used to, we used to live out in the sun when we were kids, and he had an afro, and his skin was black. We used to joke about him, you know, about uh, his mother or his father, or, well, his father, you know, a different father than the rest of the kids, because almost all the rest of the kids had blonde, white hair. Not him, he had kind of dark, so he was dark. So, fair. All right, let's take a look. All right, let's go back to Song of Solomon. If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go thy way. Forth by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tent. That's Song of Solomon 1 and verse 8. I have compared thee, O my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots. Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, thy neck with chains of gold. We will make thee borders of gold with studs of silver, while the king sitteth at his table. My spikenard sendeth forth the smell thereof. Spikenard was just a, like what they used for perfume back in the days. A bundle of myrrh is my well-beloved unto me. He shall lie all night betwixt my breasts. Didn't know the Bible was racy, huh? 
My beloved is unto me as a cluster of campfire in the vineyards of En Gedi. Hmm. Forgive my reading. Behold, thou art fair. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair, thou hast dove's eyes. Behold, thou art fair, my beloved, yea, pleasant also our bed is green. The beams of our house are cedar, and our rafters of fir. So, let's take a look at some more. Uh, let's see. In Song of Solomon, 5 and 11, it says, His head is as the most fine gold. Um, have you ever looked at somebody, a white person that's been out in the sun, and they say, oh, he has a golden complexion. You know? His head is the most fine gold. His locks are bushy. What are locks? Locks of hair. They're not talking about master locks with a key. Okay. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. Can't somebody have a golden complexion and have locks of bushy black hair? Okay. Right? And if you read the rest, in Lamentations 5 and verse 10, our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Not because I was born that way when I came out of my mother's womb. Okay. Um, but that is the extent of the black Hebrews' arguments. Is it 100% nailed shut? I don't think so. All right, well, uh, I don't, I think that, you know, we're not completely done scratching the black Hebrews off the list yet. There'll be more to come that's going to show that this can't possibly be true. Let's take a look at the Native American Indians. And while we're at it, the uh, Hispanics, you know, the brown and the red. All right, now, the Mormons believe that the American Indians are part of Israel, and you got to understand something. In the book of Doctrines and Covenants, which is by one of their prophets, they say that Satan and Jesus are brothers. And they'll say, well, we use the King James Bible, but then when you when you talk to them, uh, they'll say, well, you know, we use the King James Bible, but it's full of errors. And that's why Gabriel had to come down and, or I'm sorry, not Gabriel, but um, that was the uh, Muslims. The uh, They'll say, well, that's why the angel Moron I, M-O-R-O-N I, you got it because I, I would be a moron to believe Joseph Smith's angel that came down and gave him all this information. But they said, oh, well, you know, the Bible's an error, and that's why we had to come up with another gospel. Well, Paul said that if any, even uh, if they or an, even an angel from heaven came down with any other gospel, let him be accursed. Well, Mormons are cursed. They say that Jesus is the brother of Satan. Do you want Satan's brother for your Savior? I say, no, absolutely not. But they'll they'll hand you a King James Bible and say, oh yeah, you know, we, we use the King James Bible, but they don't believe it because they say it's an error. But let's take a look. What about the American Indians? Can they possibly be the um, chosen people, according to the Book of Mormons? Well, let's take a look at Webster's Dictionary again. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see where it leads. Okay? 
Now, in 1 Samuel 17, and verse 42, we read the following. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. What does countenance mean? It's talking about a complexion. If you have a fair countenance, you have a fair complexion. Well, that pretty much nails to the cross, so to speak, the black Hebrews. If, you know, if you have a fair, there's no Negro has a fair complexion. Impossible. Now, ruddy basically means red. Let's take a look at ruddy. It's an adjective. Webster's 1828. Of a red color. Of a lively flesh color or the color of the human skin in high health. Women, you ever put rouge on your face? Rouge is a French word that means red. They call it blush. It ha you know, when, when people blush, okay? Thus we say, ruddy cheeks, ruddy lips, a ruddy face or skin, a ruddy youth. And in poetic language, ruddy fruit, but the world is chief, but the word is chiefly applied to the human skin. Okay. What does that do to the black Hebrews? That pretty much nails the thing shut. Now, the American Indians, hey, they can have they have ruddy skin. I totally admit it. Yes, they do. They are red. They even called them red men, right? Red engines. But they're not fair. But they're not fair. They're not white. And any white person can have reddish colored skin, either from the blood or from being out in the sun. So again, does, does that, you know, what does it mean to be fair? Well, we read it, right? So... Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. How about the Asians? Uh, the only Asians that even come, uh, talk about being the children of Israel, there's a very, very, very small group in Japan. Okay. Let's take a look at the Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10. It says, My beloved is white. Ooh, that's racist, isn't it? My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. Okay, you can be white, you can be ruddy. What does that do to the Ind American Indians? Impossible, right? What about the Hispanics that are brown? Are they white and ruddy? Uh, no. In the verse of Lamentations, chapter 4, and verse 7. Now remember... Oh, uh, Samson was a took a, a, a Nazarite vow not to drink wine. And I think, you know, not cutting the hair, too. I never did understand that. You know, I, I mean, if you don't cut your hair, it's going to get long. And I don't know. You know, Paul said that it was a shame for a man to have long hair. Uh, you know, Samson probably looked like the modern rock star, you know up on stage with this guitar, you know, long hair and a beard. And... So, Lamentations 4-7. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. What group of people have white skin, you know, whiter than milk? They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. I'm not making this up. I mean, let's face it, people. Who printed the Bibles? A German by the name of Gutenberg, which means good mountain. Guten means good. Or gut. Good. Uh, if I said das Bier ist gut, that means this beer is good. And I said that many times when I was in Germany. 
when I was in the army and I was a what 18 19 year old punk now I'm a 60 year old punk but I'm not so young anymore now I'm an old punk but um, Gut and Berg means mountain. You've ever heard of icebergs? That means ice, a mountain of ice, ice mountain. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Okay. You know, what does the Bible say about white? In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, scarlet's kind of a reddish color, right? Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Hmm. Why is it that sins are likened unto red, now, you know, the Bible even says that great red, dra uh, great red dragon. Why is red symbolized with the dragon, the devil, Satan, and sin? But then it says they're going to be turned white. Weren't we washed in the blood of Christ, his red blood? And, and you want your robes to be washed white in the blood of the Lamb? Don't we read that somewhere? Uh, hopefully I'll remember that, but that's in... Well, let me find it for you. All right, take a look at Revelation chapter 7, verse starting in verse 12. We're just going to read an excerpt. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? How come they're in white robes? I mean, what is it about white robes? Why white? Why not purple or green or yellow or peach or chartreuse? What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, Thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. All right, let's take a look at Daniel, chapter 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, he was the uh, son of Nebuchadnezzar. I guess Nebuchadnezzar was dead and he took over. I'm not sure. but uh, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. And this ties in right with Revelation, people, the book of Revelation. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet, upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast all had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Dominion means... Uh, it's where the word dominate comes from. It you know, means you're the top dog, you're power. Verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. 
and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamp the residue with the feet of it. In other words, it's going to walk all over and stamp the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. Isn't this just like the beast of Revelation? 10, ten horns. I considered the horns. And behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. I believe this is talking about the, the beast, the false prophet, and the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Verse 9. Listen carefully. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white, was white as snow. Now, I think this Ancient of Days is Christ. Some people would argue, but I think this is Christ. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Okay, we're going to go read Revelation chapter 1 when we get done with this. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Now, if you want to read about the wheel within the wheel and the throne, you can read Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1. And I buy a lot of the New Agers and will say, oh, well, that was a UFO coming down. No, I don't think so. It was God's throne, according to Ezekiel. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Didn't Peter write about uh, inflaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God? Oh, yeah. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. What books? The book of life? I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So obviously, people, they're talking about, you know, Christ, the Ancient of Days, garment white as snow, and the hair of his head's like the pure wool. Well, what, what color is wool? Generally, it's white, right? Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 1. Is there a description, a physical description of what Jesus looks like? Yes, there is. And then all your modern demon nominational preachers will say, oh, well, Jesus is black. Well, where do they get that from? Not the Bible. That's their opinion. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God. Now we're talking about Christ here. Okay who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth. You know that? You know you're blessed if you read the word of God? How come we don't read it more? Oh, hey, uh, American Idol's on, or Dancing with the Stars, uh, or Kim Kardashian. No, thank you. Or football. Yay. The New England Patriots. Yay. Actually, I've never been a New England fan, but I'm just saying, you know. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, I'm talking about Asia Minor, you know, the Middle East. That's what they call Asia Minor. 
Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That don't get any better than that, people. Let me tell you something. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now, I am of the opinion that the false Christ is going to come before Jesus does. And if we're not caught up together to be with Christ in the air when he's coming back to earth, it's the false Messiah. And let me tell you something, people. When Christ really returns, people are going to wail. They're going to be unhappy. So if the false Messiah comes and the people aren't wailing, it's the wrong Christ. Verse 8, Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. It doesn't say I'm the Aleph Tav. It says I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha was the, you know, that's where we get our word alphabet. Alpha was the first letter of the Greek. And beta, beta was the second letter. So they took alpha, beta, alphabet. And omega was the last. That's like saying, I'm the A to Z. I'm the first, the last, and everything in between. I am alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending. Christ created the earth. And Christ is going to make a new heavens and a new earth and new Jerusalem. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. See, Christ is the Almighty. He's the Almighty. He's God in the flesh. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. What's tribulation? Trouble, problems, persecution. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I don't know how true it is and I'm not saying it's true and I'm just throwing this out there, just something to think about. Think about this. 11 of the 12 apostles, I'm sorry, 10 of the 12 apostles died for their faith. Judas Iscariot committed suicide, hung himself, okay? The only other apostle that didn't die for his faith, faith was John, this John, the book of, wrote, wrote the book of, penned the book of Revelation. Paul died for his faith. Stephen died for his faith. Now, according to legend, I don't know if it's true or not, they tried to kill John. They couldn't do it. They even stuck him in boiling water or oil or something, and he wouldn't die. You know, it was like when they threw the three Hebrew children in the book of Daniel. They threw them into the furnace of fire. They didn't even smell like smoke when they came out. But it killed the people that tried to throw the, the Hebrew ch children into the furnace. They died from the heat. But the Hebrew children, not even one hair was singed. They didn't even smell like smoke. And that's what, I've, that's what I've heard happened to John. They, they tried to kill him, and they couldn't do it. So they banished him to Patmos, because if they could have killed him, they probably would have. I, is it true? I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. You know, God has a way of showing the wicked, uh, you can only do as much as I let you do. You know, and the Satanists, well, they'll use that as an excuse, and they'll say, well, you know, if, if God was all-powerful... Why is Satan still hanging around? 
you know, God can't destroy Satan. Oh, yeah, he can. He's just, right now, it's just, this is a play. It's like a, a play, you know, like a movie. And God's the director, and he's doing things. You know, it's, he, he says that all things were created for his pleasure. Do you know that you were created for God's pleasure? I was created for God's pleasure. It's hard to believe God created Satan, Lucifer, whatever, knowing probably full well that he'd be lifted up in pride and fall. And if you think I'm telling you all this for pride and march around with a Nazi armband and going seek Heil, Heil Hitler and, and white supremacy, you're you're wrong. It's not. I'm trying to tell you all this stuff so that you know how to identify who are going to be the objects of Satan's wrath in the tribulation. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, who, I'm sorry, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was, who, John, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So Christ is speaking to John. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and last, and what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, that was a church in Greece, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, wasn't Jesus, didn't he, Jesus always referred, almost, well, I shouldn't say always, often referred to himself as the Son of Man. And he also said he was the Son of God. Let's face it, he was God in the flesh. And if you don't believe it, I've got an entire playlist on who was Jesus. Probably seven or eight, ten hours of Bible study. Very little opinion. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs, his head and his hairs, were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. John's describing what Jesus looks like here, period. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Well, guess what, people? They, King David was a relative of Christ in the flesh. Didn't Goliath said he was a youth ruddy and fair? Yeah. So his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. Well, you get a white person out in the sun, yeah, their skin's like brass. Well, and they're like, well, that see, that proves he, Jesus was brown. Well, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, the word of God, people. And his countenance, his complexion, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest, 
in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Uh, and Okay, so let's take a look. In Daniel 12, and verse 10, it says, Many shall be purified and made white. Why are the, the why are our robes made white with the blood of the lamb? Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Hmm. So let's take a look. In Matthew 17 and verse 2, Jesus, uh, speaking of Jesus and the transfiguration, you know, he was accompanied by uh, Moses and Elijah, right? Matthew 17, verse 2. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. Now, if Jesus' face was black, why would it? Be like the sun, you know? And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment, his clothing, and his raiment as white as the light. Second witness, Matthew 28, verse 3. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. How could their clothing not? black or green or red or yellow or purple or chartreuse. Uh, third witness, Mark, chapter 9, verse 3. And his raiment, clothing, became shining, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth can white them. You know what a fuller is? That's somebody that like bleaches the white clothes to make them whiter. You know, uh, let's see. After, after the crucifixion in Mark 16, verse 5, and entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrightened. Well, they, they say young man, but I mean, it's an angel, right? And he's got white garment. Why white? Why not? Luke 9, verse 29. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. Hmm. Second witness, John 20, and verse 12. And seeth two angels in white, sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Okay. Acts chapter 1, and verse 10. And while they, they is the apostles, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, who went up? Jesus. As Jesus went up into heaven, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Okay. Uh, what is this? Why? What's significance of white? Verse, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Why a white stone? Revelation 3, verse 4. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. Verse 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Boy, that's what I want, people. I want Christ to confess my name before the Father and his angels. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. Verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and 
white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness, your sins, the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 4, 4, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the twenty and four elders are the twelve sons of Jacob Israel, of the twelve tribes. That's half. And then the other twelve, I think, are the twelve apostles. Not Judas, but Paul. And I did an entire Bible study on that. But it doesn't tell you who they are. That's just my guess. As an educated fool of the Bible. Because to the, to the world, Bible knowledge is foolishness. Uh, Revelation 6.11 And white robes, white robes, were given to every one of them. And it was said to, unto them that they should rest yet a little season until our fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Revelation 7, 9. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Didn't we just read uh, where, you know, they asked, who are these with the white robes? Well, in verse 14, he said, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 14, 14, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. I don't know about you, but I want to be on that white cloud with Christ coming down. I don't want to be on the earth when he's got a sickle. I don't know if you know what a sickle is. It's, it's, what, it's like a huge knife that they, cut, they would cut wheat with back in the old days before they invented tractors. Another white invention, by the way. Revelation 15 and verse 6, And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Revelation 19 and verse 8, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Why is white always mentioned, you know, it seems like there's a little theme here, white, you know? For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Well, I don't have any righteousness except for Christ. That's it. Verse 11, 1911. Revelation 1911. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Revelation 20 and verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Well, what does that tell you? Do you know that even the word Adam is a racial description? It has reference to being ruddy. Now, people, this is not, I'm not promoting uh, race hatred or uh, white supremacy or anything, but I'm telling you, if, take a look around. Why is there every group of race of people have a history month except for the Caucasians, the white race. Why is that called racist? Why can blacks and Hispanics 
and have and Asian have pride. But if you say white pride, well, oh, that you're a racist. Why is that? Maybe, maybe the liberal so-called media knows who God's chosen people look like. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, Jesus says, I mean, I'm sorry, Paul says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, Abraham was the father of Isaac, who was the father of Jacob, who was Israel, and seed is children. And if ye be Christ, then are ye, not you become spiritual seed. No, 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 no. It says if, if, if you are, if you belong to Christ, then are ye, then ye are, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I got a playlist on Abraham's covenants, the covenants that God made with Abraham, that he confirmed with Isaac, that he confirmed with Jacob. Is it possible that we are the children of Israel? Well, if we are, we are going to be the objects of Satan's wrath in the coming tribulation. And I know that, you know, that's why the church invented, uh, Satan invented the church's doctrine of that pre-trib rapture stuff. Because they don't want you to prepare. If Jesus warns you, that there was going to be famines, wouldn't it be wise to put away a little food for your family? If the Bible says that there was going to be diseases, wouldn't it be wise to put away some things to combat diseases? And I'm not talking about vaccinations by the children of the devil. If the Bible warns you that there would be wars, wouldn't it be wise to have a little something to protect your family with? Well, read Matthew 24. I'm not making this stuff up. How is it? You know, Jesus called, in John 8, 44, Jesus said that there were people of their father, the devil. Was he just talking spiritually, or was he talking physically, or was he talking both? You decide. Why is it that all the different people in the world, from Asia, from Africa, from South America and Mexico, why do why do all these why do all these different colors, the non-whites, why do they always want to flock to the white countries? Why is that? They all want to come to white Western countries. I mean, let's face it. Name a non-white first world country. Uh, from 50 years ago or 100 years ago. They didn't exist. I mean, it wasn't until they took all the technology and businesses and moved them to the other countries from Western Europe and America. I mean, just because you take all the industries and, and you build Japan up to be a first world country. I mean, 200 years ago, Japan was running around with swords. They didn't have trains. They didn't have ocean-going ships. They had nothing. England in the 1830s had trains. You know, why are the Af black Africans overloading ships trying to get to Italy? Why are the Muslims trying to leave their countries to go to Europe? Why is it all, almost all the Asian people want to come to America? Why do the Mexicans flood the United States in search of a better job? Let's face it. We were the formerly Christian countries. We built the churches. We printed the Bibles. We were blessed among all people that were upon the face of the earth when we were obedient and honored Jesus Christ in the Bible. And let's face it, people. When we blessed the so-called Israelis in 1948, when the United Nations created the, the what so-called State of Israel, the United States was the most prosperous, richest country in the world. We fed the world. 
we grew that much food. We were the most powerful country in the world. We had the largest Navy. We had the largest Air Force. We had the largest Army. What happened since then? Well, they took prayer out of the schools and Bible readings, which we had when I was in elementary school. We had Bible readings and prayer in Jesus' name when I was in elementary school. They took it out in 63 and 64, 1963 and four, 1964. Um, birth control. Abortion became legal in 73. Uh, gay rights and pride and everything else. I mean, look at America now. We're the biggest debtor nation in the world. We owe more money to China than what the United States is worth. And how did that happen? We took our industries and co companies and let them move to China to play communist slave labor wages. And we dismantled our factories. Do you know in World War II, the only thing the United States was not self-sufficient in that I know of was rubber. Rubber, natural rubber. Um, they actually used to get rubber from rubber trees. Perhaps you've heard of rubber trees, but uh, that's why the Philippines and uh, India and a few other places, I think in South America too, Henry Ford had a rubber tree plantation, I think in South America, if I remember correctly. But that was the only thing we were not self-sufficient in was rubber. We supplied all of our own oil and food and and steel and, and copper and everything that you needed for a war effort. Now, everything's been shipped out. We import our food. We import everything. I mean, if you got rid of everything made in China, you'd go to Walmart, there'd be nothing on the shelf. God's curse is upon the formerly Western Christian world and God's wrath is kindled against us. I mean, you know, you can't even say a prayer in Jesus' name without somebody getting offended. Because you know what? Jesus is offensive to sinners. Jesus said, before they hated you, they hated me. Why does the world hate the white race? Think about it. Are we the chosen people? I think so. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Don't be lifted up in pride. The Bible talks about God hates pride. We ought to be on our hands and knees in repentance. And even that's become a heresy now among the modern demon nominational church world. Oh, don't repent of your sin, just repent of unbelief. Well, in the book of Revelation, in the first three chapters, I think it's chapter two or verse chapter three, uh, God, Jesus told the church to repent. How can the believing church repent of their unbelief? Explain that to me. He's asking, Jesus told them to repent of their wickedness. Yeah, he wants you to repent of your unbelief, but he also wants you to repent of your wickedness and turn away from it. America and Europe, we ought to be on our hands and knees in repentance before the Lord. And let me tell you something, people. That's what the Great Tribulation is going to be. God's going to sift his people among from among the world, you're either going to die for your faith in Christ or you're going to die of old age. I'm not sure which I am. Or you're going to follow the beast if it happens in our lifetime. And I think some of you young ones listening to me now, I think you're going to see the man of sin appear. I don't think it happened in 70 AD. I mean, General Titus was a, you know, used of God to destroy the temple, and that was the abomination, an abomination, but I think the abomination of desolation is still to come. The rejection of Christ and his cross. 
Christ crucified. That's what the gospel is, people, for the forgiveness of sins. We can't keep the law. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now, I'm not an evangelist. All right, people, this is the conclusion. All blessings, praise. Oh, before I close out, the White House petition, please sign it. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Google+. Plus. Share it everywhere. I want people to think. I, I want it to get publicity and, and the liberal media to go, oh my gosh, white, white supremacists. I want Christians to be thinking about all Jacob's trouble and why is white being white a racist thing? I want them to think about it. I'm not doing this to, to get famous or, or pride or anything else. I want people to think. So please share the White House uh, petition. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.